Jeff Schwartz with Aita here at the Doha COP18. What are your main expectations? Main expectations for COP18, I think that we, we definitely expect to see a second commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol delivered here in Doha. Um, we expect that the second commitment period will last eight years, so it would start on January 1st of 2013 and it would go until 2020 when a new agreement would enter into force. That is the main expectation and the one that we're most optimistic about. We sincerely hope, hope that parties will have enough time to discuss the likelihood of widening access to the CDM beyond the current framework between Annex 1 countries and non-Annex 1 countries, which was uh, delivered in the Marrakesh Accords back in 2001. So that document reflects a reality which doesn't meet the reality of today, nor the carbon markets of today. So we have worked with other business groups and with a few friendly countries um, in the EU and in, in Australia to schedule a few additional meetings of high-level ministers um, where we, they will discuss um, widening access to the CDM and JI, as well as um, some new ideas on how to deal with the oversupply issue that's currently um, faced facing the CDM. So one of those ideas is this concept of a CDM reserve facility and also employing the Green Climate Fund to start to purchase um, CERs as a part of its results-based approach. So those are concepts that um, the, the carbon markets came up with and we're doing our best to make sure that parties see those and that it's in their best interest um, and the interest of their constituencies to recognize that. Now I I don't expect that we'll see a whole lot from that, but I expect that we'll be able to move that agenda forward. Um, I also expect that when it comes towards a new market mechanism, parties will be able to make some progress um, on the modalities and procedures for what a new market mechanism would look like under a new agreement. But we don't have a lot of time, even though they're meeting here for two weeks, that particular agenda item is one of over 70 um, that are all being discussed at the same time. So what does that tell you? That tells you probably in 2013 there's going to be more meetings where they discuss that and they might have to discuss that outside of, of Doha. You know the COP has really become something more of a much bigger conference that's addressing all types of, of things and one thing that I'm personally glad that's finally being discussed is um, gender equality and issues uh, women face in, in the in the climate change paradigm. Um, that's something that was recognized a lot yesterday in the opening statements by parties. Um, and I expect that this, this particular conference will identify and move forward how to deal with some of those uh, terrible issues that affect um, women and gender and climate change, which is something that we actually should all be looking at very seriously. Can we still keep global warming below two degrees? Well, the representative from the EU said yes, that there's still time for that. Um, but the IEA says that in order to keep the two degree target into place, it would require something around 100 and to 150 billion US dollars that would need to be raised and spent by 2020 on low carbon technologies, on energy efficiency, on renewables in order to meet that, that two degree target. Now I don't see that kind of conversation or the kind of people who have access to that kind of money around here. Um, even though we are in, in a country that is, is um, taking you know, bigger steps to finance these kinds of things potentially, um, I'm not seeing those kind of conversations happen. So mixed ideas of whether or not that could achieve or not. What does it mean having the conference here? In Doha? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think Qatar wants to increase its profile on the world stage in terms of addressing climate change. It's the first time that um, a conference has ever been held in the Gulf region. 
Um, it's, it's interesting that it's being held in Qatar, as Qatar has the highest CO2 uh, per GDP per person, so even higher than the US or Australia or, or definitely the EU. So I think it's good that it raises awareness of the issue and it, and it educates people in this region as well about these issues and, and how real they are. Um, at the same time, I hope that it, and I, I sincerely hope that it means Qatar will play a, a more active role in addressing climate change, uh, mitigation, adaptation, and, and finance. Thank you so much, Jeff. Good luck. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you.